This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Is it possible to love the house you're haunted in? A lot of folks love their homes. It's not all that common you hear. I just love my haunted house. Quite often, it's more like I need to move from this haunted house. But in some cases, a haunted house can draw you in. It can have a hold on you for reasons that are very difficult to explain or communicate unless you're the one experiencing them. We've seen this and heard this in in some famous cases, including uh, that of The Conjuring and such, where the house just seems to have a hold, almost like a a relative that you may not get along with, but you still love and you're still going to be there for them. Sometimes homes have that same power. In our next story, it's not necessarily a house that's doing that, but it's an apartment, a home that someone has made, and it has a hold on them. An undeniable hold. To the good and the bad. They're there for the long run. Take a listen. I have always had a connection in my family with the paranormal. My grandmother was sensitive and my family lived in a haunted house for several years in the 90s. Recently, I had an overt encounter with an unexplainable human-like force. Since then, I felt more aware and tuned in to a supernatural undercurrent. I believe now that the more alert you are, the more you may see or feel. For example, I live in an apartment in Brooklyn, New York. I moved into this place in the spring of 2002. I lived in the first floor and would experience strange things. Often I'd be sitting on the couch where when I would feel something lightly tap on the top of my skull. Once, I felt a brush of cool air immediately before being tapped. I told my roommates about it, but they're both scientists and refused to believe me. After these run-ins with skepticism, I kept things to myself. However, on a few occasions, they shared their encounters with me. Often, when I'd be getting ready for bed, I would turn off the TV and then the stereo and walk across the room to the stairs to go up to bed. The second that my foot would touch the first stair, the TV and or the stereo would go back on and sometimes together, sometimes only one or two. I would then walk back across the room and turn them off. One time I did this and had to go back twice to turn off the TV. Each time the appliances would turn themselves on as soon as my foot touched the first stair as if I was being toyed with. One of my roommates saw this happen once and while he found it difficult to explain would still not believe our house was haunted. I, too, was not entirely convinced, thinking I could chalk these experiences up to nerves and electrical malfunctions. One night while sleeping in this apartment, I had a disturbing dream. I dreamt that there was a door within my room to a new room that isn't really there. There was incredible light blasting through the cracks around the door and the frame. In this dream, an overpowering force was pulling me up out of bed towards the door. This was not a good feeling. In fact, it was terrifying for some reason. When I awoke from this dream, I was sitting halfway up in bed as if I really was being pulled by my chest out of bed. It was like I was awoken in the middle of a sit-up. To know what I mean, try lying flat on the floor and then sit up without employing any muscles or limbs except for your abdominal muscles. You'll see that this is quite difficult unless you're in excellent shape. So anyway, I awoke and immediately fell back down into the bed as if I was a marionette, and my strings had been suddenly severed. I found my pillows lying underneath the windowsill across the room. I felt as though the house itself was trying to communicate with me, or something. That a dialogue had opened between myself and something unseen. I moved out of this apartment in 2005 to live in Manhattan for a few years. This past October, after my incident with a ghost in Europe, I moved back to the same apartment building, serendipitously, but into a fourth floor unit instead of the first. My old roommates still live in the first floor apartment, which is cool because it's easy for us to hang out after work, just like college. Anyway, one night when I was up in my place alone, I felt something tap me on the top of my head. Immediately, I remembered how I was often tapped in this building the first time I lived there. I tried to brush it off and occupy my thoughts with something else. Later that week, while standing in about the same place, preparing the sheets for my bed for the night, I felt a light tap on top of my head again. Again, I tried to brush it off. After about 10 seconds, as I was draping a blanket across my mattress, I felt an undeniably harder, more resolute tap on top of my head once again. 
This time I froze in mid-movement with my arms outstretched as I was tossing the blanket to the far side of my bed. I was petrified like that for about two whole minutes when I finally worked up the courage to say, Please don't do that again. It really, really scares me. Thanks. I heeded advice. I gleaned directly from this site and was polite yet direct. I've not been tapped since. However, the scariest thing happened one Sunday afternoon while I was getting ready to shower and go watch some football. I was sitting on the futon upstairs alone working on the computer which was sitting next to me on the futon. I got up to go to the bathroom to prepare for the shower. I turned on the water but forgot my slippers in the room. I left the bathroom, walked back to the living room towards my bedroom. Before I got there, however, I noticed that a chair had been in the kitchen 15 seconds before was now pressed up flush against the futon so that I could not sit down again where I had been sitting working on the computer. I'd been in the bathroom for only a minute when this happened. I was scared but pushed it off of mind and went back to getting ready to leave. This was not too alarming until I spoke with a tenant who lives directly below me on the third floor. He came up to my apartment one night and asked about midnight asking if I'd been banging on his door. My friends and I were hanging out and I told him that we hadn't banged on his door but that maybe he heard us stomping around. There's only three units in this four-floor building, and all were accounted for at that time. He insisted that he most definitely heard someone banging loudly right on his front door for five or six bangs. Bewildered, he went back downstairs. Later, I asked him about it again, fearing rejection. I breached the subject carefully. Um, do you think perchance this building might be uh, haunted? I was sure he'd laugh, but he looked at me and said, Probably. He said his cat acts strange sometimes and seems to follow invisible things about the room. I related the story about the chair to him and he grew pale. His girlfriend used to live in my current apartment. I know small worlds such as the microculture of Brooklyn youth. And he said she always pulled a chair up flush against their couch, which was positioned in the same place as my futon is now to use as a makeshift desk on which to place her laptop. We both arrived at the same conclusion. This ghost might have thought it was helping me out by providing a platform for my computer. We've both been very aware and are looking out for things like this since then, but have experienced no repeat performances. Some nights when I'm upstairs alone, I love my apartment. Sometimes I feel very nervous and uncomfortable, and I know that I'm not alone. I love that place because it's so big, airy, and clean, but on some nights it has an undeniably sinister feel to it. I'm ready and waiting. This is Real Ghost Stories Online. Want a commercial free experience of the show with access to the world's largest audio archive of ghost stories? Sign up at Apple Podcast right now and try it for three days free. Ghostpodcast.com or patreon.com slash real ghost stories.